Well, for the latest on the Nigerian protests, I'm joined via Zoom from Abuja by human rights activist Omoyele Sawara. He's, uh, of course, a part of the group leading the protests in Abuja. Thanks so much indeed for joining us. Welcome to the program. Uh, the president, the authorities have said that SARS has been disbanded. Why are you still on the streets? I think uh, this is probably the fifth time they uh, claim that SARS has been disbanded. So the public has lost complete confidence in the government to tell the exact truth about the condition of uh, this particular deadly uh, police unit, what they call a uh, tactical unit of the Nigerian police that is fighting, according to them, fighting and robbery. It was created in 1992. I was a victim of SARS myself in 1998 when I went for a student protest. I was uh, arrested uh, and kept with all these uh, so-called armed robbers that had been shot and they would take people out at night and kill them and torture. they have a torture chamber next to us. We had people with several, you know, various degrees of injuries, you know. Uh, I don't need to describe that on TV, but they've just grown worse, you know, arresting people for owning cell phones that are expensive, like iPhones, arresting people that have colored uh, your hair, or they have a mohawk, or you drive a nice car, or you have a laptop uh, that looks really good. They make you, they force you to give them a password, and they force people to give. To they stop money from people by taking them to the ATM in the middle of the night. So people are just saying retire. But one thing the world should understand is that the anti sars or the NSARS protest is just an outlet for pent up anger in Nigeria. People are like pissed off with. Uh, you know, uh, human rights abuses, uh, rising food uh, prices, the fact that uh, the president is indifferent to the diversity in the country, it's very, very, very uh, divisive figure. People were just tired and uh, they just came out this time around using that outlet as a way of telling the system that they're tired of it. So what then will deal with it? What, what will... Nigeria look like for Nigerians to say this is the country that we're fighting for? Oh man, you know, I spent five months in uh, detention last year because I was asking for a revolution. I, I think uh, a lot of people have uh, come around to understand that the system has to be so The system is not working for people of Nigeria. You know, Nigeria right now, for South Africans to understand, it looks like an apartheid, apartheid state, you know, where like discrimination, there's police brutality, impunity, uh, tyranny, terrorism, and insecurity uh, for a majority, why a few tiny minority of its elites are just having a great life, you know, buy private jets flying up and down, and they're taking care of themselves at the expense of the majority of the people. We have 200 million people in this country. And Nigeria just uh, last year became the world capital, I mean, in the world poverty capital, uh, taken over from uh, India. Also, Nigeria also recently uh, became the place where a child is likely to die at the age of five. Uh, I mean, before reaching the age of five. You know, you got all the statistics that are really, really, really bad. And people come to the conclusion that it's because of uh, uh, terrible leadership, incompetence in government, and general wickedness of our leaders. So what you're seeing is that 75% of Nigerian population, young people, have just risen up. For some of them, if you ask them what is this about, they just don't care. They just feel like, you know, we're tired and we just want to fight power. You know, it's, uh, it's them challenging power, some of them, for the first time. So does that mean the democratic process is not working? Because somebody votes for these leaders that you say are not good enough. Well, you know, the biggest democracy you can have in the world is choice. And if people are tired of uh, the guys you claim they voted for, uh, in my own case, I don't believe they were ever voted for. The, the, the last election was one of the most horrible elections. That nobody voted. They just uh, they released big numbers. Uh, and, uh, they swore themselves into office. And they tell you to go to court. And of course, they own the judiciary. Uh, but in this case, people are saying that the real democracy they want is democracy that improves life and not democracy of tenure. So they're demanding respect uh, through uh, street credibility. And that's what I'm saying. So you, you can't be stuck uh, in a bad marriage simply because uh, you sign nuptials. Uh, if marriage is bad and you have been abused, you can get out of it. That's, that's, uh, that's democracy. 
But in particular, Nigeria doesn't have uh, what you can call democracy. I think uh, what we have is uh, what we call morontocracy. These morons hijack democratic process. So is this movement going to grow and continue for some time, do you think? Uh, I don't know how long it will be, but even if it doesn't continue for a long period more, it will not go away because people have uh, realized their power. And coming back until they get uh, the best out of, uh, you know, uh, this kind of uh, democratic insurgency, uh, I think that the movement will continue. But what I'm saying, I don't think it's going away anytime soon. But what? you know, then they're likely to introduce, you know, a crackdown to kill a few people and people might be scared. But the young people I've seen on the street these days are very determined. Uh, so I don't see them backing down anytime soon. Uh, you talked about just now you being arrested uh, for treason. You were a presidential candidate. So this goes beyond just SARS. It seems that a lot of the security forces in general have the same problem. They have. You know, SARS is not... Uh, SARS is just a symbolism for this mass resistance, mass uprising. I think it was the safest word they could use for it because a lot of people probably didn't understand. They didn't want to use the word revolution because they are afraid of the security forces come you know considering what they did to me last year because I asked for revolution uh, but I believe very very strongly that uh, this is going to lead somewhere else that is beyond SARS it's already beyond SARS because as you imagine they've already banned SARS they put some measures in their own uh, reckoning in place but people are saying that's not what they want and you keep asking what do they really want so like they want bigger changes. They, they want the system to change. So by like today, they went to the National Assembly. They're asking for a NAS, which is National Assembly in Nigeria. Because our, our senators and the House of Representatives, legislators are at the highest paid in the world. You know, great for cash. So people are just uh, looking for the outlet to make a number of demands. But, you know, the interesting thing is that it's a leaderless movement, so you can't really pin anybody down to a meeting to say, you know, stop this and get them to agree to... A con There's no command and control structure in place. So that's why the government is really having a hard time putting this under control. Uh, but we see how it goes. It will be tragic uh, if it ends, if this feasible. So it's back. Earlier this week, I spoke to the Nigeria director for Amnesty International, and I asked her this question I'd like to ask you as well. Um, you know, one can almost understand some of the activity if it's corruption related and people are trying to make money. But what's difficult to understand is the brutality and the torture and all of that, because one wonders to what end. Oh, you know, uh, in Nigeria, torture, brutality, and oppression is also very commercial. It's a very lucrative business because when you torture people, their families are forced to bring money to build them up for the police. Uh, if you arrest people, the police make money out of it. It's, you know, it's, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a racket. So every tool they can bring to you know, to bear on you, to extort money from you, they'll do it. That's why they torture people. But I also think that, you know, it came from the colonial era. The Nigerian police was not created for the Nigerian people. It used to be known as the constabulary, uh, which was answerable to the, to the queen of England. And they did whatever the queen wanted. So when we had independence, we didn't have a structural organization of police force. Uh, that's why they still call it the police force. And don't forget, just so, so that you know, before there was SARS, there used to be a unit of the police force known as the Kill and Go. It was a mobile unit. And they just randomly choose people on the road and choose, or they just shoot at crowds and, you know, demonstrators and go. That's what we call them Kill and Go. When there was a lot of outcry about Kill and Go, then they brought SARS, which is a special anti robbery squad. But the interesting part, which is a contradiction about SARS, is that if you are getting robbed in Nigeria, there's no SARS that will ever come to bail you out. They don't help people. They don't fight for it. And they just fight young people uh, who look a little wealthy, weird, or somebody that they can make money from. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a, 
it's, it's just crazy what it is. Yeah. All right. Mr. Sawara, we're going to have to leave it there, but one does get a sense that there's a, a lot of uh, very frustrated people in the country and uh, they're quite uh, willing to uh, uh, keep marching until uh, some end is reached. Thanks so much indeed for joining us and sharing your thoughts with us today. All right. So that's so Omo Le. Uh, Sawari, who is uh, a human rights activist and campaigner who was a presidential candidate himself and was arrested last year for treason because he was calling for a revolution.